the Green Bay Packers have surprised us. We knew they had the cap space to do it. Did we know that they would do it? The Green Bay Packers make NFL free agency headlines being one of the biggest movers as free agency opens. Two legends of the franchise gone. Two hopeful new legends to the, to the franchise enter. We're going to break it all down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Snubbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Snubbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack. Listen to us on your podcast platform of choice, Apple, Spotify, wherever you are. Please leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments. If you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Hit that subscribe, like, and the bell. Smash the bell so you get notified as soon as we put new episodes into your feed. The Green Bay Packers have interrupted the the very full schedule talking Badgers that we've had this these past couple of days because it's March, it's madness, and, and the Green Bay Packers decide to get on, in on the madness as well. First move of the day, of the, the madness day, was the Green Bay Packers releasing left tackle David Bakhtiari. And that is a sad move. Frankly, the longest tenured Packer uh, on the roster. Drafted in 2013, David Bakhtiari is a, a legend of the franchise. I, I did mean that when I said it at the top. Obviously, the part about maybe these two new free agent acquisitions will be legends of their own. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's wish casting. We'll call it wish casting. Um, but David Bakhtiari is a legend of the franchise. Did not win a Super Bowl, but came in and competed every year for one under Rodgers, and then in the one year under Jordan Love. Again, not, not a year that David Bakhtiari got to compete very much, but that team was at the height of its powers. One of the best eras in franchise history, marked by one of, if not the best offensive linemen, certainly offensive tackles in franchise history. And... David Bakhtiari is more than just a salary cap casualty. Certainly his cap situation did not help. Look, he got a huge contract and deserved every penny of it when he signed it. Unfortunately, injuries have since plagued him. Drafted in 2013, he had made five consecutive all-pro teams. David Bakhtiari for five straight years, one of the best offensive tackles in the National Football League. I remember talking to my boss at a former job, a very former job now, uh, back in the summer of 2021 at a bar in Cleveland, Ohio, talking about the Packers ceiling, what they were going to do, talking football, you know, Browns fan, right? Great fans. feel like Browns fans, Packers fans have a lot of camaraderie don't don't play a lot between the between the two franchises being in separate conferences but a lot of similarities there in like small town kind of vibes same same kind of way that i think about um packers and bills fans almost ha having some of that cold weather smaller market talking talking football with my former boss and it's 2021 talking aaron Rodgers, all all this but one of the big sticking points in the conversation was we just locked up the best offensive tackle in football. The best left tackle in football. I starkly remember that conversation I had with my boss about David Bakhtiari, a Cleveland Browns fan. Because that's how much he meant to this franchise. Not just in Green Bay. He was a legend in the league. And some of that is from his antics that made him a perfect fit to be a Green Bay Packer, the chugging beer at a Bucks game. And then <laughs> in his goodbye video to Green Bay, David Bakhtiari showing the clip of him absolutely destroying uh, a drink at the Bucks game, followed up by a Aaron Rodgers' failed attempt to do so. He had that levity to him. A fun guy to be around. Wearing the number 69 and embracing it more than any. <laughs> 
any adult I could imagine. And you, you kind of saw this coming after a, a, a comment that he made on a on Rashid on a Rashid Walker Instagram post talking about you know the future of Green Bay. Saw a little bit of that coming. But it, it's sad to see him go. The Green Bay Packers free up $21 million in salary cap space, taking $19 million cap hit with him gone. Pierce David Bakhtiari is going to continue to play. Not sure what team is going to want to take a chance on him. That's it, going to be all up to the medicals. It's all going to be up to the medicals on how on how this one goes down. I'm sure that the Bakhtiari camp is going to let just about anyone who wants to get a look at him if they feel confident in in the knee. And it, it appears that they do. That they're going to let just about anybody get, get a look at David Boxiari that they can to drive up some of that market value. To to I mean there I would not be surprised if we see one good report out of out of a visit that David Bakhtiari makes to a team in free agency. And then that spreads like wildfire. If it goes well, if David Bakhtiari goes to any team and there are tons of leaks about, Hey, the medicals were great. Well, you know, who's, who's leaking that information. If David Bakhtiari goes to a separate team, or whatever. If Dave Boxyari makes it makes a visit to a team and you don't really get any leaks about the medicals, I think that might tell us all we need to know. I think that might tell us uh, the medicals aren't as good as Bakhtiari's camp might want us to believe uh, because otherwise they're probably trying to plant some kind of a leak to, to say, get somebody to put it out there that, hey, we were really impressed. Granted, I don't know what's going to happen there. Hard to have the player side get a leak that the team side thought that the players were good medicals. I understand that could get complicated, but I don't know. The ACL injury, the nagging knee injury really, really put a damper on what was turning out to be a great career for David Bakhtiari in Green Bay. He, he finishes 11th all time in franchise history and approximate value per pro football reference and ended his career as a Green Bay Packer in week one of this past season by giving the bird to a bunch of Bears fans at Soldier Field. Doesn't get much more Green Bay Packer than that. Uh, move, moving forward for the Packers, Rashid Walker is going to continue to get a real shot at the starting left tackle gig in Green Bay. I think Zach Tom is going to stick on the right side. L lots of chatter about Rashid Walker being more, more of a swing tackle job like maybe not quite a second string guy, a one and a half stringer, you know, not quite maybe good enough for the first team, but he's, he's going to get a real shot to do so. Brian Gutekunst seemed to really like what he saw from Rashid Walker this season. I liked what I saw from Rashid Walker this season, said, said so as much as on this show, but do not be surprised. Look, Rashid Walker, for as great as he's been, he's a seventh round talent. He's come a long way for, for being a seventh round pick in 2022. The Packers are going to draft another offensive tackle. I don't necessarily know or think that they will draft a tackle on round one. I truthfully I have no idea what the Packers are going to do in round one. Um, but a day two tackle pick would not surprise me. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm not necessarily predicting that to happen but they're going to draft a tackle earlier than round seven. I, I'll tell you that much. It's not going to be waiting out for another Rashid Walker in round seven. The fr franchise needs, needs to feel stable enough to do it because I, I don't think the options behind Tom and Walker are stellar stellar, but we shall see. Um, the other Green Bay Packer released today in a cap casualty move frankly, is Aaron Jones. Another, 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 another sad one. For, for a moment there, Aaron Jones was the longest tenured backer on the team after uh, David Bakhtiari was released. 
Then no more Aaron Jones. It is now Kenny Clark is the longest tenured Packer on the Green Bay Packers. The Packers wanted to bring Aaron Jones back. It, it was very clear at the uh, end of season presser for, from Brian Gutekunst that they were interested in bringing Jones back. Both sides had some mutual in, interest in getting a deal done. According to some, to some reporting by Matt Schneidman of The Athletic, the Packers wanted to take Aaron Jones' pay down to half of what his salary was going to be on his current deal. Obviously, Jones' agent isn't going to love that. And they got a little bit closer together, but couldn't couldn't get it up there. The, the Jones camp seems to think that he's, he's going to be able to get something close to $10 million in expected annual value on the market. I am not sure if I believe that, but you know, I'm I'm not Aaron Jones agent. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm just a guy on the internet. Another Packers legend, another Packers legend that, that has to go. Third all time in rushing yards in green Bay, only trailing Jim Taylor and Amon green. If those are the only two guys you're trailing, uh, you, you did something right as green Bay Packer after being drafted in 2017. Fourth all time in rush yards or rushing, rushing touchdowns rather third all time in, in rush yards. Um, five yards per attempt, 5.0 yards per attempt for Aaron Jones in his career. Just a mighty, mighty, mighty impressive time in Green Bay. And not just five yards per attempt in, in Green Bay, but 5.7 yards per attempt in the final five games to close the season. After struggling with that hamstring injury that he suffered at the tail end of that week one game in Chicago that Aaron Jones had been playing masterfully in. Struggled for a while, couldn't get quite healthy, couldn't get quite up to 100%. He comes back in the lineup and absolutely tears it up down the stretch of the season. Probably playing his most impactful football of his career. And I say that not even saying the best football of his career, because maybe there are times throughout the, throughout the years that he has had a better stretch, although I don't think so. But this is certainly the most impactful stretch of football for his career in the, in the way that he was able to impact winning on a high level, winning playoff games and winning playoff game, but it should have been playoff games. Uh, but Aaron Jones, 30 years old, going to enter his 30 year old season this year. Lots of injuries after, you know, week one on. That's tough to bring a guy back at. But nobody who seemingly loved Green Bay more. Aaron Jones uh, would have loved to have him back on the team. Now the Minnesota Vikings are reportedly sniffing around, according to some reporting also by The Athletic. Which also, by the way, uh, pay up your subscription to The Athletic. Support Matt Schneidman over there doing, doing excellent work covering the Packers beat. Subscribe to the Journal Sentinel. Tom Silverstein, as always, as he has done for years and years and years, doing excellent work down there. Listen, I have favorites. I'm not trying to play favorites. That's what I like to read. But subscribe to your local journalists. They're doing hard work. Um, Aaron Jones would love to bring it back. Vikings apparently sniffing around. That would be a gut punch. It would just be gross. It would just be gross. One of those things where it's gross to see him in, in purple. Ugh. I guess it wouldn't be as bad because who knows what their quarterback situation is going to be. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta. 35 years old, going to be 36. Kirk Cousins get $100 million guaranteed in Atlanta coming off of an Achilles injury. Kirk Cousins, who amassed generational wealth to uh, win the Minnesota Vikings one wild card playoff game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Vikings. So sad. So sad. So sad. But Aaron Jones, not not the only running back out there in, in these here national football leagues getting some money, getting paid. 
I would think he would. Not the only running back with news in Green Bay in free agency. That's one of the big moves Green Bay made. We're going to tell you all about that after we talk to you about our friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I get tickets to any sporting event that I would like to go to. Listen, I don't know what Packers game I'm going to be going to yet this season. Uh, I had some talks about going down to the game in Nashville. Packers going to Packers going to be playing at the Tennessee Titans this year. Uh, but if I'm going to be going to that, if I'm going to be going to the Big Ten tournament, I saw, oh man, men's basketball tournament. I think it was the the Rutgers Rutgers Maryland game this week. Um, Big Ten men's basketball tournament over on TickPick. You're you're gonna get the best price possible. You can go. <laughs> hey, go ahead, go watch, go watch Michigan for uh, four bucks on TickPick. Doesn't that sound great? Go go to go down to Minnesota if you're already living in Minneapolis. That's fine. If you're stuck in Gover Country, hey, get to get to uh, the target center and uh, make the scroll down to the tick pick app. Cause you're not going to pay fees on those tickets. No, those tickets are going to be four bucks, four bucks to go watch some big 10 hoops. Might not be the best big 10 hoops, but it's still big 10 hoops, right? And, and tick is going to get you the best deal on those tickets that it possibly can with no fee tickets, no fees ever. You're never going to pay fees for tickets on tick no service fees, no delivery fees, $0 fees on tickets on tick pick. Plus, if you use my link in the podcast description, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order of $99 or more. Sounds like a great deal to me. So download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K, P-I-C-K in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. You're going to save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick. Download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K, P-I-C-K. Click my link in the podcast description to save 10 bucks on your first order. Never pay service or delivery fees for tickets ever again. Uh, coming up this week on the show, Woo, again, March madness. We, we got madness, madness. Um, tomorrow we are going to be talking about Wisconsin's potential opponent in the Big Ten tournament. Wisconsin basketball has a first round bye, so they will not be playing on Wednesday. Their first game will be on Thursday. That game against the winner of Maryland Rutgers on Wednesday. That game is being played. Um, so on tomorrow's show, uh, I'll actually be recording with some great guests we have who know their stuff on Rutgers hoops. And then another guest who ha- knows their stuff on Maryland hoops. And we'll break that all down into in one episode, not, not going to be like an hour, hour long show where we'll, we'll have it broken down real quick for you talking about Wisconsin's potential opponent. And then if you want to watch that Rutgers, um, Rutgers Maryland game, kind of what you might want to watch for in those teams as Wisconsin gears up for a rematch against those two teams again. Um, we'll be talking about that tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we'll be talking women's hockey with Noah Clark once again. So Wisconsin gears up for its NCAA tournament regional final matchup. Um, preview a little bit about what you might want to watch in the play in round, essentially, between St. Lawrence and Penn State. Uh, for that game on Thursday, breaking down Wisconsin's path to a national title. Uh, if you want a little bit of a rapid reaction to that, the last episode or t- two days ago that we put into your feed had a little bit of an instant reaction to Wisconsin making the NCAA tournament their their path there as I reacted to the bracket just as it was coming out. We'll be talking about that on Thursday, Friday. We'll we'll break down Wisconsin's basketball game there in the Big Ten tournament. And then keep talking hoops for for as long as we can. Soon enough, it's going to be Selection Sunday after that, right? Friday, and then 48 hours later, essentially, we got Selection Sunday. We'll have a bracket. We'll have a 60-18 bracket to talk about. It's March. It's madness. Another thing that was madness today. NFL free agency in the running backs market? The running backs market? Yes, the running backs market was madness. Look, the, the Packers got in on the action, too. Top of the market was Saquon Barkley. Three years, $37 million. The Packers paid about that. Four years, $48 million for one Josh Jacobs. That There was a second there where it looked like the Packers were going to be pairing Josh Jacobs with Aaron Jones in the backfield. A second there, but because we did not yet know that uh, Aaron Jones would not be returning to the Green Bay Packers, but we now know that he is not, which is which is unfortunate. 
Uh, but Josh Jacobs, the Packers outbid the incumbent team for him in an impressive move, right? The Packers got some got some cap money to spend. They they decided to spend it. Josh Jacobs was seeking a deal. The o- Oakland, Vegas, whichever you want to call them, Raiders were putting some money on the table for him, but the Packers outbid the incumbent team to get him. And the real question with Josh Jacobs, the 26-year-old running back, as opposed to Aaron Jones, who's going to be 30. So that, that's an improvement right there. Running backs, look, once you get the tread on the tires, NFL teams just don't want you. It, it happens. This is a league that chews up and spits out these young running backs. It just happens. It's the way it goes. Question with the 26-year-old running backs, what version of him are the Green Bay Hackers going to get? Because there were some folks who, frankly, a lot of folks, a lot of folks who were jumping for joy about Josh Jacobs. And I think that happened because they are remembering the 2022 version of Josh Jacobs, who was phenomenal, who was probably the best running back in the league. In 2022, Jacobs led the league in rushing, was a consensus first team all pro selection, leader in rushing yards per game. In 2023, however, he he had mm, probably the worst season of his career. He had career lows in yards, yards per attempt with only 3.5, career low in yards after contact per attempt. His numbers were way worse in attempts per broken tackle. It wasn't the best season for, for Josh Jacobs. And when I saw it, when I saw the deal happen, I said, okay, maybe the Packers here were trying to buy low. Buy low on a stock for a guy who was very high before. A consensus first team all pro selection just a season ago, a two time pro bowler, a, a former offensive rookie of the year, a guy who had some health issues, maybe due to some substandard offensive line play. Packers didn't really pay a discount for, for a guy coming off of a rough season. Got four years, 48 million, right? Right at the top of the market, along with Saquon Barkley, who, who signed with. The, the Philadelphia Eagles for three years, 37 million. Other running backs in the market also getting a ton of money. The running backs market went crazy today. DeAndre Swift ties, 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 signs with the Bears for $8 million average annual value. Tony Pollard leaves the Titans to go, leaves, ugh, leaves the Cowboys to go to the Titans at $8 million average annual value. It's a lot of money to be thrown around for running backs for, for a position that we don't have a a ton of evidence to necessarily suggest makes a big difference unless you are getting one of the top, top, top guys. And Aaron Jones, I thought was kind of an aberration where he was certainly one of the top guys and a guy that just fit Wisconsin's offense, Wisconsin's offense, Green Bay's offense. Oh man, it's March. Please forgive me. That fits Green Bay's offense kind of perfectly. Paying four years, 48 million for a guy who has shown that he can be the best running back in football for a guy who has shown that he can be a three down back an all purpose back. You better hope that's what you're getting for four years, 48 million. And I think the, the, the piece that is perhaps more insightful than anything about how franchises and front offices view running backs was that, despite all of these flurries of running back moves, signings, right at the start of free agency, despite the cap going up, there wasn't a push upwards, really, of the top of the running back market in terms of dollars. So running backs still not the most highly valued position on the field. So the Packers aren't going to be signing another guy. They're, they're not going to go out and re-sign uh, A.J. Dillon for this, because he's on expiring contract. Definitely going to have to go get a second guy in, in the draft, I, I would imagine. It increases a lot of the urgency there to draft a Blake Corum, perhaps, who Packers had mocked quite a bit. Maybe a Braylon Allen, even, 
I, I genuinely mean that. Maybe a Braylon Allen. Those Badger names always seem to be thrown around for, for the Packers. Feels like they draft them at a, you know, relatively decent clip. Don't certainly don't go out and grab all of them, but grab some. More likely to grab some in the like undrafted free agent market, but I'd be interested to see what happens there. I'm very interested to see how NFL teams end up valuing Braylon Allen. Uh, I'm fascinated. But also Emmanuel Wilson, who who shined for the Packers last season in, in the preseason. Don't know it, it, what what kind of role he's going to play. He's going to play a, a bigger role in, in this offense. I would imagine this upcoming season as a potential second, third running back for the Packers. Uh, the Packers made additions on both sides of the ball and get one of the top free agents available at their top position of need and again beat out the incumbent team with more money. Went over the top. Good. Brian Gutekunst laid it all out there. Beat out the New York Giants for Xavier McKinney. Xavier McKinney, the safety who can play all over the field. And at the Combine, Brian Gutekunst made a comment talking about how he is seeking out defensive backs that can play all over the field. Very high safety, down at the box, kind of a nickel corner position. That front office feels that they should seek out defensive backs that can play all over the field. And I think it makes a lot of sense in Jeff Halfley's offense, or Jeff Halfley's defense, rather, that plays one high safety. You need one very, very, very talented safety to do it. Xavier McKinney is absolutely that guy. One of the best safeties in the National Football League right now. Incredibly young. Going to be headed into his 25-year-old season. He's 24 years old right now. He'll turn 25 in August. He can play all over. Strong safety, free safety. Drop down to the box. Going to be a big move, and, and the Packers... Safety room is going to be completely overhauled and good because it was uh, not great last season, as we all know, as, as we as Green Bay Packers fans know. Darnell Savage, Darnell Savage goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Simone Biles, Jonathan Owens, no contract yet for him. Brady Ford, no contract yet for him. Packers make, make a big move. Their safety room standing around waiting for something. Lots of free agent safeties out there right now, and Green Bay goes and gets one of the best of them, one of the most versatile guys, a move that I am very excited about, a move that makes sense in the way that the trend is going in the National Football League, where you need these defensive backs to be impressive athletes, impressive athletes and stocking up some of them to, to prevent injuries because the Packers had quite a bit of injury problems in the secondary this season. Eric Stokes consistently getting hurt, hasn't played in what feels like two years. Jair Alexander with some injury issues. But if you get a healthy Jair Alexander, if you get a healthy Xavier McKinney, you've got an awesome, awesome secondary there. You are pairing a couple of potential all pro guys back there. When, when you put that together, with what you got up front, Lucas Van Ness, Colby Wooden, Kenny Clark, a Preston Smith, who in this new defensive scheme is going to be asked to just pin his ears, ears back and get the quarterback. Rashawn Gary. When you got talented guys in the secondary, and you got all that talent, raw talent, raw athleticism up front in some of these young pass rushers, some of these older but skilled pass rushers. The defense is going to have a chance. It needs it needs a linebacker. It needs a linebacker. It needs a linebacker in the worst way. <laughs> really needs a linebacker in the worst way. But if you can just, you know, cut out the 10 yard middle of the field, uh, that's a great, great, great defense. That's awesome. Backers obviously have some work to do, but make huge moves, headline moves in free agency. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash that's Connie six pack. Let me know down in the comments below. 
What are your favorite memories of Aaron Jones? Favorite memories of David Bakhtiari? And what do you think the bigger move for the Packers was in free agency here? Signing Xavier McKinney or signing Josh Jacobs? Which one do you think is more important? Let me know down in the YouTube comments below. Let me know in the reviews. If you leave us a review, five stars, kind comments, it will really help the show. Otherwise, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Thank you for listening and go pack go.